Right my friends, before we start, do me a favour, just hit the subscribe button, it will not cost you a penny, but what it will do is, it will push this video out to YouTube and educate the thousands and thousands of other people that electric cars are not the future, and save them wasting their money, their hard earned money, on a car like this one behind me, the Porsche Taycan, which is an all electric car. Now I've said time and time again, in my opinion, I don't think electric cars are the future. However, in today's video, we're going to take a journey from here in Nottingham to a forecourt, an electric charging forecourt of the future in Norwich, which is GridServe. Now, I've said, one of the major problems with charging is in weather like this, which is apt really, you get absolutely soaked. It seems that electric charging, they're not taken seriously. The infrastructure, they're not taken seriously. There's queues, there's massive queues, you get wet through when it's raining because there's no canopies over the top. Well, this one is different. This is exactly how electric charging should be. And if it is the future, which I've said I don't think it is personally, then this is the way that it should be going. Now, I've been to the one in Braintree in Essex before, and today we're going to go to the one over in Norwich. Now, what we're going to do is we're also going to work out exactly how much it cost me to get there, and also we're going to go back as well and do the journey back. Uh, so get your pens and paper to, together and let me know whether it would have been cheaper in a petrol or a diesel car. I'll let you know what charge I've got in the car, exactly how much it is to charge up as well, my friends. So as I've said, please do hit the subscribe button. It will not cost you a penny, but it will save thousands and thousands of people their hard earned money. Now, without further ado, my friends, let's go. Right, okay, so pens at the ready. So we have got uh, 174 miles uh, to our destination over in Norwich to the charging forecourt. Incidentally, uh, that part of the UK uh, has supposed to have, it's supposed to have the least amount of charging points out of anywhere in the UK. It's a bit of a charging point desert. Um, so it is interesting that they've actually put one there. It's probably the best place to put it. Um, now then, what have we got here? We've got 91% of battery. Your evangelists are going to say, well, you should have started with 100%. Well, I've gone from Mansfield over to Nottingham to, to my barbers to have my hair cut. Uh, and then I'm going from Nottingham here over to Norwich. Um, so we've got 91% of battery, 237 miles of range. Now, bear in mind, this 237 miles of range is going down drastically now, day by day, because um, as we get to colder weather, then my range is reducing and uh, decreasing because colder weather has an effect on the batteries, which gives me less range. So driving in winter actually costs me more money in an electric car and also a little bit more inconvenience because I drive from uh, Mansfield to Leeds a lot and I just about have enough. Well, I've, I have enough in summer to get up there, drive around a little bit and get back. But in winter, it, it kind of, I'm pushing it. I have to charge up, so it costs me more money. Um, it's gonna take us two hours and 55 minutes to get there. Now I've been to the um, charging forecourt at the one in Braintree in Essex. And I have to say, I've been there on the vlog before. If we are going to go to an all electric future, then that is where we need to be going. Because at the moment, part of my issue with electric cars is not just the electric cars themselves. It's an amalgamation and a fusion of the fact that batteries and battery technology is not there yet. But also a larger part of it is the infrastructure. And the infrastructure to me, it doesn't seem to work because we've got people putting charges in and, and companies putting charges in at the back of McDonald's or at the side of McDonald's or at the side of Asda, raining really heavily, or at the side of uh, Asda, etc. It just seems to be an afterthought, if you know what I mean. We're Whereas GridServe, if they can push this out and other companies can push this out, then this is the way that it needs to be going. You get there, 
There's plenty of uh, chargers there. There's a canopy over the top so that you don't get wet through while you're charging. Very much like a petrol station that you have now, a filling station or a gas station if you're over in the States, etc. And that's how it should be. And that's where it should be aimed. But at the moment, it isn't. A lot of the chargers are not working. They're based as an afterthought, etc. And how many years? And you get a lot of the evangelists saying, well, it's just time. You know, when uh, petrol first cars came out, you know, it took time. There wasn't that many petrol stations. Yeah, but they were done a lot quicker. This, nobody seems to be putting any thought into it. Apart from GridServe at the moment, GridServe are the only ones at the moment that I've seen where you can drive up and you've got a canopy over the top. And I know it, you're probably thinking, well, does it really matter? Of course it matters. You want comfort when you get there. And you get to these places, I'm not sponsored by GridServe, by the way, but you get to these places, there's a Costa there, there's a Marks and Spencers there. You can do a little bit of shopping. You can, if, you've, if you're a businessman, there's meeting hubs, etc. It really is the electric forecourt of the future and that's how it should be going. Anyway, we're gonna hit the road. Hopefully we'll get there around about lunchtime and we'll see what it's like. We'll stop along the way uh, and have a coffee as well and a little chat, got a few things to go through with you, uh, especially on the other videos that I've done uh, and some of the comments that I got back from the evangelists. Honestly, they really are like a religious cult. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? I'm talking about electric cars and they're getting personal. It's unbelievable, these evangelists. Yeah, look at the comment section of this. You'll see them all. You really will see them all. They literally are like somebody who knocks on your door on a Sunday morning trying to talk to you about their religion. It's unbelievable. They really are. They're on a different planet. They're off their head. Now, some would say that I've chose the wrong day to actually do this on because the weather is absolutely terrible. However, I reckon it's the right day, as I said, because obviously we're going to see this uh, charging uh, forecourt with canopies over it, although at least the one in Braintree in Essex did have canopies over it. So if it's raining like this, you're protected from the elements. Also as well, I've got the heater on because it's cold out. I've got the windscreen wipers on. So it's hammering the battery. So it's a real life situation. We're down to uh, 203 uh, miles now of range and 166 miles to go. Now, it could be very close to the edge by the time we get there because uh, basically how I drive it could change how much battery that I've got left. So it could be on the edge. When we've been to uh, that forecourt, we're also then, I'm gonna go over to Lowestoft uh, to do a video and then also come back to Mansfield again, which I'll do in a different video as well. And we'll uh, charge along the way as well and maybe see different charging infrastructures across the way. As I say, the east of England has got the least amount of charges at the moment, so uh, it should be interesting. I've done Norwich before, and uh, I have to agree, there wasn't many charging points. It was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I was uh, nipping buttons off the seat, as uh, my dad used to say. Now, the comments that I've had in the past videos that I've had from the evangelists are unbelievable. As I say, they are like their own religious cult. And you have religious cults within that as well. Different religions like your Tesla drivers, etc. Some of the comments were getting really, really personal. And I'm just talking about electric cars. These people are literally off their heads. People who love their electric cars, you can, they are blinkered. They are beyond help. They are, they've been taken over. I've said before, they're like Cybermen who's been upgraded. Upgrade in progress. Unbelievable. And I can tell you this, and I've said it before, I always have a bit of a giggle and you can have a little bit of a laugh with me. And I'll say, you can, if your neighbor's got an electric car, I guarantee you they will be called Fred and Doris or something like that. They'll be playing in their car on their big iPad screen in the middle and they'll be playing Klaus Wunderlich or 
Burt Bacharach or something along that, or James Last or I don't know, along that line anyway. But, and I can guarantee, I've said before, that 99% of electric car owners are definitely swingers. They can be found in Blidworth Bottoms on an evening at 11 o'clock at night, flashing their headlights only once to conserve battery, as I've said before. Uh, they are strange people. They've got their own set of uh, Ten Commandments, one of them being, thou shalt not covet another man's charging point. They're unbelievable. They're a, they are literally, uh, they are a bit of a clan, I have to say. That's why we call them evangelists. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. You can't talk negative about an electric car to them. They live and swear by their electric car. I've actually had threats against my life to stop talking negative about electric cars. That is how passionate they are about their cars and their electric cars to them. It's the future. You can say nothing against their electric cars. What's going on here? I can't see. Right, anyway, come on, onwards. Right, so we've got 157 miles to go. Um, I'm down to 84% of battery uh, and 198 miles of range left. Um, so my range is actually going down. Now, there are lots and lots of different channels, uh, YouTube channels out there that talk about electric cars. A lot of them, most of them, always sort of like give the positives of electric cars and they wax lyrical about them. There's one channel in particular that I watch. Um, I won't mention its name, but the presenter used to be on Top Gear before it got really good and funny with Jeremy Clarkson and etc. and James May. Uh, and they never say anything on that channel that's negative about electric cars. It's always, they are the future, they're brilliant, nobody can say anything against them. Their audiences as well always seem to be, it's literally like a, a Sunday in a church with a guy banging on at the front saying, give me your money, give me your money. You know, you know the what I mean, the evangelists, etc. Yes, sir, you're not gonna eat me. It's literally like a get together of evangelists, of a religious cult. I just don't understand it at all. I don't get it because there are lots and lots of drawbacks about electric cars. Now, there also are positives of electric cars. You know, round town, I think, perfect. Brilliant around town. Get yourself a, a nice little mini electric or whatever, or uh, uh, what is it, a Nissan Leaf is it? Get one of those, drive them around town, charge them up overnight, absolutely perfect. But for long distances, these electric cars do not make any sense whatsoever because they're massive, they're big, they're heavy, they're cumbersome. You've got, you sat on batteries here as well, which is a fire hazard because Porsche at the moment have actually recalled a lot of their cars. I believe it's in Australia because they've had uh, fires breaking out on them. I don't think, I don't believe they've recorded them in the UK. You'll have to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure that, well, they haven't. I haven't had a letter from them. So everything, hopefully, touch wood, uh, is going to be okay. However, I tell you, this car will be the death of me. It stressed me out so many times trying to get it charged and finding somewhere to charge it. And you do get range anxiety. You get really, really anxious when it starts to get below 60 miles range. And you're thinking, oh, where's the nearest charger, etc. And is it gonna be working? Is there gonna be anybody on that charger? How long am I gonna be waiting? It doesn't make viable sense. But round town, I will agree, absolutely perfect. I think electric vehicles around town are spot on. My biggest gripe is that after 2035, if it happens, unless it gets put back again, 
that we're having that choice taken away from us. We can't have diesel, we can't have petrol, you have to have electric. And that's where, that's where I have an issue, that we're having that choice taken away from us. And I've said numerous times, and I won't keep banging on about it. Well, I will actually. I believe that we're having freedom of movement, in my opinion, taken away from us because a lot of people can't afford these electric cars. Electric cars cost more to start with and they decrease rapidly, a lot more than a petrol or a diesel car. If you look, you get a lot of classic cars, classic Porsches, 911s, etc. I've had one Porsche that I actually took back and I got more money when I took it back than I actually paid for it. That's never going to happen with an electric car because obviously we all know the batteries in these, well, they don't last, do they? It's like a mobile phone. They just throw away disposable items and that's what an electric car is. It's a disposable item, but it's a very, very expensive disposable item. You know, the idea of these videos for you, of me driving my electric car around the UK or whatever and showing you the drawbacks of owning an electric car, it's to show you a real world scenario of what it's actually like, because nobody seems to be doing that. You've got electric car channels out there, but it's always showing you how amazing it is. And, you know, it's all fluffy bunny rabbits and do you know what I mean? Blue skies, etc. Not really the reality of actually owning one of these things. So the idea of this, uh, me driving around, is basically to show you the drawbacks of owning an electric car and what my experience has been. There's lots of stories on the news, etc. And you never know what to believe, do you? It's unbelievable. Because I, this is just me, I'm saying this, but I don't understand this right. There's been a lot of EV fires, okay? Now there was one, there was a fire down at Luton Airport, but it turned out to be a diesel car. And the news was very quick to say it was a diesel car. It was a diesel car. But then you get conflicting stories saying it was a hybrid. Now I don't know, I can't clarify that, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna go into it because that's not what my channel's about. But what I can't get my head around is, in my 30 odd years of driving, I've had numerous diesel cars, I've had one electric car, and I've, I've never heard, since EVs came out, I'd never really heard of that many, well, any, I'd not heard of any fires on diesel cars. But as of late, there just seems to be a lot of diesel cars bursting into flames. And I don't understand it. Why is that? The news are always reporting, oh, it was a diesel car, it was a diesel bus, it was a diesel fire. But in my 30 years of driving since EV, when it, before EVs came out, I'd never heard a news story about a diesel car catching flames. I mean, I'm sure there was, but as of late, there seems to be a lot of diesel car fires. I mean, I have seen EV fires. As I say, there is a Porsche Taycan in China on fire and these things go up in flames. Now, one fire uh, chief said, if a diesel car does go up in flames or a petrol car goes up in flames and you have a lot of electric cars about, then that obviously adds to it. I don't know, how safe are these things? Pop it in the comment section down below. Let me know, everybody has their own opinions. But you will have, there is one guy in the comment section, an evangelist, telling me that electric cars, I think you'll find, they're actually less of a fire risk than a petrol or a diesel. And he went into all the statistics on it. Unbelievable, honestly. He'll probably, walk, he'll definitely be a Tesla. He'll be a Tesla owner. And I can tell you this, for breakfast, right, Tesla owners, Pop it in the comment section, right? They will have, let me just overtake this car. They will have smashed avocado on toast with fresh tomato. And then for lunchtime, they'll have something like, I don't know, 
a bit of sushi or whatever they'll be eating that thinking they're trendy with their espresso um, and, <laughs> and then for dinner at night we'll definitely have some tofu in there and uh, they'll, they'll be going to or going to some kind of you know one of those trendy pubs that cost a fortune anyway gastro pubs come on onwards Right, serious question to the evangelists now, right? So listen up, evangelists. This question is for you. I've asked it before in many videos, but not one of you has answered me this question. So listen carefully, right? Get your keyboards at the ready and get your fingers at the ready. Okay, listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Hello, hello. Um, right, so, are you ready? Listen. You think electric cars are the future, okay? You believe religiously that electric cars are the future. And you're being told by the powers that be, by your government, that you must drive an electric car. You cannot buy, or, or you, you can't, they can't sell or make any more petrol or diesel cars after 2035 it is now for now until they change it again so why is it that if we're being told to drive electric cars by the powers that be they are still driving their gas guzzling SUVs 4x4s Range Rovers etc as I've said before the mayor Sadiq Khan driving around in a gas guzzling Range Rover. Our Prime Minister driving around in a gas guzzling Range Rover. Bulletproof, armor plated, heavy cars that take a lot of fuel. Right? They're driving around in them. You've got the President as well over in America driving around in a massive gas guzzling cars that not only that they drive around in over in the United States when they come over to the UK etc they bring those cars and fly them over in planes which and bring them over here they're not driving around in electric cars so my question to you is they're telling you to drive an electric car which you're doing you're adhering to and bowing down to why aren't they driving electric cars answer me that just answer me the question without being sarcastic give me a factual information why they are not driving them just doesn't make sense to me Interesting, in that last clip, you've got some uh, new gritter, grit spreading lorries back there. Bet they weren't electric. I mean, can you imagine that? Grit spreading, electric, <laughs> electric grit lorries. Um, can't go very far, batteries will run out. I mean, can, are there any electric lorries at the moment? I don't actually know. Pop it in the comment section down below. I know that Elon Musk was supposed to be working on a, an electric truck or something. Can you imagine the amount of batteries in that? That would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? There'd have to be huge batteries in it. That would be absolutely insane. It wouldn't work, would it? I don't think it would. What? Let me know. Probably the evangelists will let me know in the comment section down below. By the way, evangelists who think that you're saving the environment, I know that the UK has uh, a lot of its power from wind power and solar power, etc. But a lot of other countries uh, don't don't have theirs comes from coal etc. So the power that you're putting in your batteries comes from coal. 
so that doesn't really make any sense does it and I personally think as well I know we're all about saving the environment but you know the United Kingdom is insignificant really if we went all electric in the UK but the rest of the world didn't like China etc the amount of fumes that they're putting out we're not going to make any difference so the entire globe would have to go all electric how would that work and how would the grid cope if everybody went electric surely they'd have to the powers that be would have to say oh well we're going to limit when you can charge you can only charge at a certain time they're going to have to otherwise the surely the grid wouldn't cope i don't, I don't know maybe you work for the grid let me know in the comment section down below if you work for an electric company um let this lorry go do you know what there's two lanes and it takes ages for lorries doesn't it they just take they go side by side anyway that's a different story come on onwards Mavis and Harold, there's another couple, another evangelist couple, definitely, definitely EV owners, Mavis and Harold, and I've actually seen in one of my previous videos, when I've driven back, I think from Gatwick, where there was a couple charging their car up to 100%, my hasten to add, and then you get rage because you shouldn't charge past 80% because it goes slower. Charging past 80%, your car charges slower. So you should only really charge up to 80% and then let the next person get on there. They actually got out their flask of coffee, credit to them really, because they're saving money from going to Costa Coffee. They got, they got out their sandwiches, a flask of coffee. I was sat there waiting to charge up. And then they went through and she got another, she got a little picnic bag out and then she got some cakes, etc. some Mr. Kipling cakes to eat as well. May, Mavis and Harold, that's it. And you can tell, you go in their house, they'll definitely have a teapot, right? The house will smell kind of fusty a little bit and they'll have a teapot with a tea cosy as well. And they'll bring you the tea out with a tray and uh, and some biscuits some rich tea biscuits nothing too exciting you know custard creams a little bit over the top for them that's your, that's your evangelist your typical evangelist <laughs> maybe some um uh oh i'll tell you what what biscuits would they have pop it in the comment section down below what your evangelists what biscuits would your evangelists have probably them pink wafers that are really cheap <laughs> Right, I'm just pulling in to get a coffee and a bacon butty because I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit sick to be honest. I think it's the uh, range anxiety kicking in. So I'm just gonna pull up, get a bacon butty. Interestingly enough, I'm just looking to see if there's any charge points here and I don't think there is at these services. So um, yeah, if you needed to, needed to charge up, it doesn't look like there's anything here. So you'd be stuffed. Right, I'm gonna go and get myself bacon butty and a coffee. Right, so let's park this milk float up and then we'll get back on the road again. I'll just tell you exactly what I've got um, in range, etc. Let me just park up one second. Here we go, that'll do. So uh, I've got, well, we've got 112 miles to go, 67% uh, of battery and 100 and 54 miles of range so milk flow off and i'm going to go and get a coffee and a bacon butty right i'm just looking definitely no charging points here 
so nowhere to charge but you have got a garage over there I'll just have a quick look over there and see if there's any charging points over there at the uh, filling station no definitely no charges here right I'm gonna go and get my bacon butty uh, and then we'll hit the road again and uh, hope I think I'll make it there anyway but you never know it depends whether I've got to get the heaters on and the wipers on again that all takes battery Right, so got my breakfast here, uh, got my uh, latte as well, we'll get back in the car, work out the mileage etc, get back on the road. I have to say one thing by the way that really winds me up these days, I don't know about yourself, but everywhere you go, if you go to McDonald's or you go to Asda or wherever you go, it says on the till, round up for charity. Now, I give to charity, I have it automatically taken out my account each month, but I don't need to keep having to tap that. When you go and fill up with fuel, Add to charity, round up to charity. Let me decide whether I want to give to charity or not. It, I don't know, does that wind you up? Is it annoying? Is it something that should be stopped? And how do we know whether it's actually going to charity? Now that is controversial, isn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna drink my McDonald's, eat my uh, butty and then get back on the road. Come on, onwards. Right, okay, so let's get back on the road. So uh, at the moment, now listen to this, okay. Got 67% of battery because I've turned the air conditioning off. Now, a lot of the evangelists will say, well, don't use your air conditioning, open the window. Um, I don't want to do that on the motor. I want my air conditioning on or climate control. So 67% of battery, 168 miles of range, okay. Uh, 112 miles to go. Now, put the air conditioning on. I turn it off because you can hear it on the camera. So I put the air conditioning on. 156 miles of range okay so 156 miles of range turn it off 168 miles of range so you can see just how much power is being taken from the air conditioning also if it rains the wipers itself as well everything else in the car it's taking it's taking power away from your range so it doesn't work, doesn't make out sense. Anyway, let's get back on the road again. And also I've had a lot of the evangelists saying, you're only doing this for clicks. Listen, I could get on an aeroplane like I'm doing next week, record my flight out to Spain, go to sunnier climates and get just as many views. You know, I'm trying to do this to push this out to save thousands and thousands of people wasting their money on an electric car. Now it may be for you, an electric car may fit your purposes and your lifestyle, driving around town, etc., making people cups of tea uh, with a fluffy tea cozy. I bet, uh, do you know what? I bet evangelists as well. I bet if you go into their loo, they've got one of them dolls with a knitted doll that goes over the toilet rolls. You know what I mean? They used to have a little doll with a knitted thing. You, what was all that about? Anyway, that'll definitely be your evangelist. That is that is your evangelist. That's people who own electric cars. Right, let's get, let's get back on the road. I don't know where don't know where all this is coming from, but I tell you what, tell me, what biscuits do they eat? How do you get out of here? Right, petrol station. That's a novelty, isn't it? We've got an electric car going through a filling station. How do I get out of here? Is it this way? Oh, these places drive me nuts. Right, come on, onwards. I've just got let out by a Tesla driver. I was pulling out, flashed his lights, very courteous. It's like, ah, fellow EV driver there, part of the community let him go not in the same uh, religious group as the teslas but you know who is flashing somebody else to go in as well anyway come on get out of the middle lane get out of the middle lane why are you driving in the middle lane what are you doing
Right, I've seen three cars now, electric cars that I've gone past, right? A Genesis, an Ionic, which I can't abide, uh, and what was the other one? A Cupra or something? And I keep banging on about this. Car manufacturers, if you're watching, right? Or anybody that works for car manufacturers, I've got to tell you, they are absolutely ugly cars. I've blown my nose and the contents of my tissue have been more attractive than and better looking than these cars. They're unbelievable. They just look terrible. Who's designing them? I actually had one comment from some evangelists saying, you don't know what you're talking about. The Ionic is a beautiful car. Listen, I answered him back and I said, my answer to him was, if you think that the Ionic looks like a beautiful car, then you obviously find Sam Smith in leather, tight leather, attractive. And that was my answer to him. If you're watching, go to Specsavers, mate. Honestly, those cars are terrible. They look awful. The, the Taycan's a beautiful looking car, but I have to say, driving down to places like this and having driven really nice cars like the Boxsters and M3s and M4s, the, the thrill and the the acceleration from them, the exhilaration that you get from them. It's just something else. It puts the hairs on the back of your neck when you hear that sound and you can change down, etc. You know, even if you don't have a stick shift like I used to have, you used to have flappy paddle gearbox. I used to love it. You'd change down. I believe you have more control over um, petrol and diesel cars than you do over these oversized milk floats. And I tell you what, this is this really winds the evangelists up when you call them battery operated cars, because that's what they are, isn't it? It's a battery operated car. Basically, Sinclair C5. The Sinclair C5, it's a new power in personal transport but an enlarged version of it. <laughs> I'm giggling to myself and I've got to be careful how I tell you this because why I'm laughing, because it is a family channel. So adults will understand because I'm not going to say, but you can get the meaning. But your stereotypical evangelist, electric car driver, are the kind of people that put a towel down on the bed before, well, you, you know what I mean. I'm not going to say because it it's a family channel, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Tea cozies as well. I mean, what is it? Be, be, be kind, don't be rude because it is a family channel. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Uh, don't be rude, um, put it in the comments section, your stereotypical EV driver. Uh, and if you live, if your next door neighbour's got an electric car, <laughs> you know what, you know what I mean. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> On there, Polestar. Who's designing these things? It looks terrible. It looks awful. If you're going to do an electric car, at least make it look nice. I mean, that the Austin Allegro looks better than that, and that's saying something. That's honestly, where are they get? Where are the designers? Where are they? Is it just? Is it just computers that are just designing them? They, they look naff. I don't get it. If, if electric cars are going to be the future, at least give them some character. Good grief. Roy Cropper's got more character than that car. You really ran me over then. It was a gear selection problem. Should have been right and back, not left and forward. If you don't know who Roy Cropper is, he, he's your average evangelist, your average EV driver.
You know, you might have seen a video a few weeks back where I actually got locked in this car and I couldn't get out. Just try and open it from there. You're having a laugh. I'm, I'm boiling. This is not funny. It's not funny. Sharon, open the door, please. Can you open the door? I can't. I, you need to open it. I'm, I'm, it's getting too hot. I'm, no, it's too hot. Right, we're trying to open the door now. I, it's t Sharon, I need to get out. And you've got the evangelist going, I think you'll find if you read the manual, uh, that uh, you can pull on the door handle really hard and uh, it'll open up. Well, it didn't. The manual part of the door handle didn't work. I actually took a, a chip out of the door handle from pulling it that hard. Um, I tell you what, the, the, this car will be the death of me. I mean, it's unbelievable. I couldn't get out, I started to panic. Um, it reminded me of that movie. Because I've, I've said, oh, there's lots of movies where cars are just as much a, a part of the star of the movie as the actual actors themselves and there's one that comes to mind um when i got locked in this car i mean you could have devastating consequences if if i was out in the wilderness in scotland or whatever and i'm locked in the car and couldn't get out but one movie came to mind was christine Do you remember it? The red car and it was trying to, it was trying to kill its owner. And that reminds me, it's actually coming true now with these electric cars. And I think there was a song on it and it was, they keep on knocking, but you can't come in. And it's, it's kind of topical because I got stuck in my own electric car. I tell you, these cars, electric cars, in my opinion, could have devastating consequences. Um, but there you go. As I keep saying, it's only my opinion and my experience. Other people will tell you differently. What I will say, however, is I am not sponsored by any electric car company or by any oil company. I've had actually evangelists say, you're sponsored by oil companies. Well, you know, I'm open for uh, offers, Shell, Texaco, and uh, what's the other one? BP or whatever. Who remembers National with Smurfs? We are the Smurfs from National. <laughs> National's the world place on earth. You get service with a Smurf. Uh, anyway, I'm babbling on now. Let's get there. We've got 60 miles to go. We've got 107 miles of range and 45% of battery left. So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. The big question is, though, how much is it going to cost me to charge? And how much would it cost me in a diesel? Well, in a diesel, I'd have got there, back, there and back and there and back again, probably. So uh, anyway, go on, onwards. Now then, here's one for you. Answer me this. I'll let you know in the next clip where I speak. BMW make lots of electric cars now. Now, BMW drivers get more range out of their electric cars. Why do BMW drivers get more range out of their electric cars? Can you answer that before I let you know in the next uh, clip? Come on, get your keyboards at the ready. It's a good one, this, you'll like it. Right, so my question was, why do BMW drivers who drive electric cars get more range out of their electric cars? You'll like this, did you get it right? Because they don't use their indicators. Saves the power, you see. BMW drivers don't use their indicators. I knew you'd like that one. Spread it, you can have that one, you can have it. Come on, onwards.
I tell you what, what a beautiful part of the country this is. Absolutely amazing. Answer me this question though, what was that monument that I've just passed there, that big monument? What was all that about? Can you let me know in the comment section down below? I've passed that before when I've been down this way and I've often wondered that. Uh, let me know in the comment section. You know, I'm smiling because I've seen Norwich there and every time I see Norwich, it just reminds me of my childhood. Now, you'll only know this if you're actually from uh, the United Kingdom, but who remembers live from Norwich? It's the quiz of the week. It's the quiz of the week with, um, what was his name? Nicholas Parsons. They used to do it sail of the century and you used to have uh, the the knight on the on the horse oh those were the days a lot simpler back then even the news back then was a little bit more i know there was negativity in the news but you always used to have the and finally didn't you with the uh, trevor mcdonough Trevor McDonald they used to call him Trevor McDonald on Tis Was, didn't they? Tis Was and Swap Shop as well. You'll only understand this if you're from the UK. I'll tell you what though, EV drivers, right, I can tell you now, they would have been Swap Shop. They would have been in the Swap Shop camp. They would not have been cool enough to be in the Tis Was camp, I can tell you that. <laughs> Come on, onwards. I'll tell you what, the future EV drivers as well back then would have been watching Blue Peter, right? But us other people that, you know, didn't follow the trend and wasn't like Lemmings, we'd watch Magpie. Remember that? With Mick Robertson. Was it Mick Robertson or Mick Robinson? Mick Robertson with the Kevin Keegan style hair? Now that was a cool programme. That was like the ITV spin-off of Blue Peter. And I used to watch that. Whatever happened to him? Mick Robertson or Mick Robinson? Does anybody know? I'd love to know what happened to him. I have tried to Google that before and I've, I've, I think he owns some kind of sort of like broadcast company or something and then he's just gone into oblivion where is he he's a legend the guy is a living legend well i think he's still living anyway hopefully he is anyway come on onwards Right, quick update for you, 25% of battery left, 61 miles of range and 13 miles to my destination to the grid serve electric forecourt of the future. Um, quick question for you here though, lots of evangelists saying, I think you'll find that uh, most people who have electric cars charge their cars at home. Okay, I'm just gonna put this one out there for you though, right? Not everybody, lives in a house right people live in flats and apartments right and terraced houses what happens then are you going to have wires trailing over the pavements lawsuits coming in for people tripping up over the wire that while well, you're charging your electric car up what happens then or do you have to charge your car then on the public charging network which is more money and cost you more than a petrol or a diesel? Answer that one. I'm just putting it out there. I'm sure you've got an answer for it. All the evangelists have. It'll be in their Bible. Hey, now here's one for you, all right. I've said 
your stereotypical EV driver, okay? And I said they'd have them pink wafer biscuits earlier on. They'd be the kind of people that have pink wafer biscuits. However, um, and I said, you know, the name would be Doris and, I don't know, Harold and Doris or whatever, right? But on a Sunday, they would crack out the Viennese whirls. And if you go in an EV evangelist home, right, I'm saying as well that they'll have a second set of cutlery that's, it's, oh, we, 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 leave, we, we keep this one for best, you know. We've got, don't we? We like this set of cutlery for Sundays. We only use it on Sunday. And their sofa, I guarantee you, it'll still be wrapped in plastic in that cellophane so that you don't get any marks on the sofa or anything. Stereotypical EV owner. <laughs> can, you, can you give me any more, um, you know, any more uh, ideas of stereo, stereotypical EV owners in the comments section down below? Remember, it's a family channel though, so keep it clean. Right, here we are. Gridserve, electric forecourt of the future. Now, if this, are they crossing or not? No. If there's, you've even got cars here that you can actually test drive as well. Electric cars that you can test drive. This is the forecourt of the future. You've got post office, Costa Coffee, Marks and Spencer. You've got all your charging points here as well. Uh, on both sides, I'm going to come. I'm going to get out and show you as well. Uh, you've got air and water. Uh, you've got your Tesla chargers as well there. Um, this really is how it's got to be if we're to take electric cars seriously. But nobody else seems to be doing this other than GridServe, and I'm not sponsored by GridServe, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to charge my car up here. Underneath, I mean, I'm not going to get wet if it's raining. So we'll pull the car in here. There we go. Uh, and we'll charge up. See how much it is. It's probably not going to be as cheap as a petrol or diesel. But here we go. Right. Okay. So milk float off. We'll go and charge up. Take a look around. Have a coffee uh, while the car's charging, etc. And uh, let's go and have a look at the forecourt of the future. Come on. Right, so they're all 350 watt chargers either side. There's lots of them here. You've got this side and the other side. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you've also got representatives here as well to help you out. You can also test drive the cars as well. So we're going to have a look around there. I don't think we'll get time to test drive any cars today, uh, but they've got shops in there. They've even got music playing. And I always whinge about getting wet when I'm charging my car. Well, I'm dry because you've actually got a canopy over you like in a proper filling station. As I say, if electric cars are to be the future, then this is how it's got to be. Right, let's plug in. Right, okay, plug it in. There we go, 350 watt. What are we at? We're at half past 12 at the moment. So uh, let's go and charge up and see uh, basically how much it's going to cost as well and also how long it takes. So it's 12.35 at the moment. Let's go and start this thing. Right, preparing to charge. Setting up communication with the car. Let's, uh, come on, come on. Preparing to charge. It's thinking about it. It's talking to the car. You can get a digital receipt again. Hopefully I can get that. It's always a bit of a nightmare. Right, here we go. 21% charged, 69p per kilowatt. Uh, charging at the moment at, what are we at? 188 kilowatts there. Right, it's going pretty fast to be fair. It's 12.35, we're at 22%, 190 kilowatt. 
so it is going up as well 191 kilowatt so it's getting it's getting there it's getting there well while, while this is charging anyway it's 12:35 uh now we'll go and have a look around and then come back to the car and see how much it basically is so 12:35 let's take a look around well it's all very nice you've got nice eating areas outside here with tables and chairs etc you've got uh, grass and trees on the wall you can test drive all the cars i'll have a look inside as well with your coffee and stuff but uh, it all seems very nice i mean this is really the uh, the charging forecourt of the future now the rest of the i've spoke to one of the guys actually and he went yeah he says this is how it needs to be apart from a dimly lit charger at the side of a service station or a mcdonald's they need to take it seriously if you're really going to want if you want electric cars to be the future then this is how it's got to be the only issue is they're not doing it quickly enough come on Right, so you can basically test drive any of these cars. You've got the BMWs here. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's have a look. Um, they've got a Tesla as well. So I'm actually going to do um, a video on the Tesla, which you might have already seen, actually, if you've not seen that, because I'm going to probably do that first, if I can. Um, you've got the Polestar. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, come on, is that a Polestar? What is it? It's just terribly designed, isn't it? That is, that's awful. Right, um, we'll have a look around here as well. You've got more charging points at the back here on this side. Um, I tell you what, it is. Um, I'm still not a fan of electric cars, but this is a step in the right direction. Right, let's have a look inside uh, and see what this place is like. You've got Costa Coffee here as well. I'm going to test drive that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put that one out. If I can test drive a Tesla, then you'll have already seen the test drive. So uh, have a look at that one if you've not seen it. Right, so it's five to one now, uh, and we're at 72% charge. Really, really fast charger. Uh, it's doing 104 kilowatts at the moment, I believe. Is that right? Let's have a look. Let's take a closer look. Right, so it's done 74%, uh, 69p per kilowatt. We're at 19 minutes so far. So, uh, so far, Excuse me, so far so good. Um, uh, I tell you what, I've got to say, I mean, I'm still not a fan of electric cars, but part of that reason is because of the infrastructure. And if this, if there's more of these, then 100% it will make it a lot closer to becoming an all electric future. Uh, you know, it's another step towards it. And there's more on the way. I was asking the gentleman inside. Leeds is down as well for a grid serve uh, electric forecourt. Uh, and all the power, they've got solar panels on the top of here as well. So everything's powered by solar energy on here, uh, which is great. So Leeds is to come as well. So I'll look forward to that one. We'll review that. Uh, we'll just wait for this to get to 100%. And uh, I know you're not supposed to, but there's plenty of charges here. So there's no problem. Uh, people pulling in. And uh, I'll just have a look at that. 
Let me have a look around. I'm going to grab myself a coffee and then uh, we'll come back and work out how much it is. I'll tell you what else is good as well because a lot of people miss out people with disabilities as well and think about people with disabilities who've got electric cars and Gridsurf here, and by the way I'm not sponsored by Gridsurf, but Gridsurf here have a space dedicated uh, for people with disabilities here. There you go, lots more space around it so they're even thinking about people with disabilities. You've got meeting pods in there as well as you probably saw on the b-roll, uh, you've got a post office in there, you've got a Costa coffee, it really is for me this is absolutely fantastic it's just how long is it going to take for other companies other than Gridserve to do this because this is really the direction that we need to be heading in and the only issue that we're doing <laughs> that we're not meeting at the moment is we're not meeting it quick enough these places need to be built quicker and quicker and quicker they're waiting for planning permission for for instance at Leeds they need to get the planning permission through a lot quicker and get these in every city across the UK and across globally really. Right you know what I'm going to um, finish this off now because it's at 87% so it obviously gets slower um, after 80% we're at 88% so I'm going to call it a day because I'll have enough charge to get me to where I need to go uh, and then also I can charge on the way back as well and we're going to we're going to record that as well. Um, so we'll go and finish this off, see how much it's cost. Uh, it's now four minutes past one in the afternoon, so it's taken just over half an hour, hasn't it? Anyway, let's go and stop this thing and see how much it's cost. Right, let's get this thing out and then we'll work out exactly how much this has cost me. Who knows? That's the only thing, it doesn't tell you like a petrol pump, does it, as you go along? Anyway, let's pop it back. Right, so um, I can't find the receipt. I've literally gone online. You have to scan a barcode um, and then go online and it shows you basically the charge ses sessions for my card. And the last one that I've got here was uh, Woolly Edge. Uh, which is when I charged up uh, for one of the last videos that I did and I just asked the gentleman there and he says it could take a couple of days to show up on the system because it's the first time that I've actually charged here so I don't know how much it's actually cost me um, uh, which is uh, you know it's, it's, it's not ideal is it um, I guess that you are better off probably having their membership cards if you're going to do it Right, so just stop the video right there. So uh, it's like a couple of days after now, yeah, two days actually after filming that video uh, and nothing's come through on the GridServe website as yet. However, it has come through on my Revolut card and shown up and it was £39.44. and pence. However, it does show the drawbacks because you need to know straight away, I think, uh, if you keep a track of your finances, on how much you're spending. And you don't, unlike going down to a petrol station putting money in you can see exactly how much you're putting in waiting two or three days to find out how much you've been spent and you've been charged i know you can work it out per wattage etc but it's not acceptable uh, in my opinion anyway back to the video um but again that's another issue isn't it and you've got to have membership cards for different ones if there's grid server and then you've got ionity etc you can have a uh, an amalgamation of different cards etc so um, I don't know uh, if, if when I'm editing this video um, maybe you could work it out with the amount of kilowatts that's gone in it pop it in the comment section down below if I've got the cost by the time that I've edited this video I shall overlay it on the screen uh, and if not what I'll do if you do want to know once I do get it through I'll pin it in the comment section down below so you'll know exactly how much it's actually cost me uh, but you do the maths as well and let me know but I'll uh, I'll pop it in the comment section and pin it there so um, there we go so that's it um, my, I'll tell you what my electric car will be the death of me I tell you um, uh, anyway, that's all from me today. Um, do I think that electric cars are going to be the future? Do you know what? I don't think anybody can answer that question because nobody knows what is in the future. Uh, if we did, we'd all know the winning lottery numbers, wouldn't we? And we'd be able to afford to buy an electric car. So I don't know whether electric cars are the future. And I don't think that anybody knows whether electric cars are going to be the future. However, 
this is definitely a step closer to being an all-electric future in my opinion uh, but there you have it but uh, anyway in the meantime as I say this car will be the death of me anyway thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it do hit that subscribe button it is important that you do that it is free totally free uh, and it will educate others uh, it'll help it'll push it out and help educate others uh, to whether electric cars are the future you'll have to make your own mind up for that one thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one just a quickie by the way I'm back in my car um, <clears throat> and it's 215 miles of range now uh, and 89 percent so um, whatever it costs me like I say I'll pin that to the uh, comment section and you'll see exactly how much it cost me to charge up there uh, unless I've already got it if I did get it then I'll overlay it over the video um, but it is annoying isn't it you can't get very easily how much you've spent which is not ideal is it you need to see on the screen how much it's actually cost you because otherwise you're in the dark aren't you it's like when you go to a petrol station good serve if you're watching that needs to change it needs to tell you on screen exactly how much you exactly how much you've spent so there we go anyway see you in the next one right just a quick update so um i went to lowestoft after uh let me turn this car off uh after um i'm really tired sorry i went to lowestoft after i'd been to grid serve and uh i've literally just got back uh, to mansfield so i went to lowestoft then i drove back to mansfield and i've not i've managed to get back without charging up i'll just switch it on again and i've got uh, it says please check range please recharge battery immediately i've got back with two percent of battery left four miles of range left um so basically it was i was nipping buttons off the seat i have to say and the car was gone into limp mode and gone really slow so he didn't get full power reason being if i'd have charged up to a hundred percent obviously i'd have had plenty of range to get back but you get your evangelists always saying, oh, only ever charge up to 80%, don't charge above 80% because it goes slower after that. Well, that's the issue. What's the point in the, I don't understand what the other 20% is for. Do you just not bother using that? Doesn't make any sense to me. So there we go. So I've made it back uh, and uh, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a close call. But anyway, I'm going in now. I'm absolutely shattered. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.